Voice of Indonesia. Well, listeners, wherever you are, now here in our studio we have uh, the Deputy Head of Mission of Pakistani Embassy in Jakarta, His Excellency Mr. Muhammad Faisal Fayyad. How are you, Mr. Faisal? Thank you so much. I am absolutely fine. Thank you so much for having me here. And uh, today we will have a conversation. I have an interesting conversation on the two countries' cooperation. And uh, before we start this, I would like to congratulate the government and the people of Pakistan for their uh, national day, August 14. Uh, it means uh, 1947, so it should be the 76th anniversary for this year. Yes, that's right. Thank you so much for uh, the congratulations message. And uh, I reciprocate you, Indonesia, Indonesian brothers and sisters, and the government of Indonesia also on uh, 78th Independence Day of Indonesia also. Yes, uh, Mr. Faisal, uh, as we know that uh, Indonesia, Pakistan, and also Bangladesh are three countries with the most uh, densely populated Muslim country in the world. And then, as we know that the Kingdom of Arab Saudi, or Saudi Arabia, um, already gave rewards for cooperation in the process of serving pilgrims. So, how do you see this appreciation? Yeah, uh, as uh, you rightly mentioned, that these are the three biggest Muslim countries in the world with the largest Muslim populations. And uh, it's the desire of every Muslim, uh, same goes with Pakistan, to perform Hajj or Umrah uh, in once at least in their lifetime. So Pakistanis are also very passionate about performing these uh, rites or rituals, religious rituals. So Pakistan in that regard, Pakistanis also especially, they hold special regard uh, to Saudi Arabia. They give uh, high importance to Saudi Arabia being the birthplace of Islam. Uh, Pakistan on a political governmental level, we have excellent relations. We have strategic relation uh, with Saudi Arabia, which date back to our independence in 1947. Uh, the relationship is spread across various sectors, across various areas, from political, economic, uh, mm -hmm. cultural to people to people contexts. Uh, we have the largest diaspora of Pakistanis uh, residing in Saudi Arabia, around 2 million. Uh, they are playing an important role also in the development of uh, relationship of the two countries. They have already played an important role in the development, socio-economic development of Saudi Arabia. They are skilled, unskilled laborers. And similarly, Saudi Arabia has provided a lot of job opportunities to this Pakistani diaspora, which send their remittances to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia itself is the biggest source of remittance for Pakistan. So the relationship is uh, two dimensions, two ways. I mean, uh, both of the countries uh, share all these uh, regards and respect for each other. So this appreciation is highly uh, appreciated in Pakistan also. As um, we know that, and you already mentioned that, yes, Indonesia, Pakistan, and also Bangladesh are three countries with uh, mostly um, densely post, uh, Muslim populated countries. So as two big Muslim population countries in, in the world, uh, both Indonesia and, uh, and in, uh, Pakistan, are, of course, are really serious similarity, as you mentioned, in politics, economy, education, and so on. So how do you see especially in terms of cultures and um, uh, education. Between Indonesia and Pakistan. In, in Indonesia and Pakistan. Yes, uh, we have also excellent relations at political levels. Our economic cooperation is very robust. People-to-people uh, -people context or cultural context, as mm -hmm. you are saying, they are not uh, as good as we would like them to be. Mm -hmm. Although the focus of both the countries is going towards that direction, mm -hmm. that the real depth of relationship between two countries actually comes through the enhancement of people-to-people -people contacts. So we are trying to find ways and means of enhancing or bridging the gap which still exists at this level. Uh, at the government level, government of Pakistan offers uh, different opportunities for Indonesian students or youth to come to Pakistan, visit Pakistan, study in Pakistan. So we provide various scholarships. Uh, that is called Pakistan Technical Education mm -hmm. Program, PTAP. So we provide different scholarships to Indonesian students, to ASEAN, to many other countries also, mm -hmm. just to enhance 
uh, this kind of uh, cooperation between the two countries. Similarly, many students from Pakistan also, they visit Indonesia, they come to Indonesia to study here. According to my information, more than uh, 200 students are studying here in different universities of Indonesia at the moment. So <clears throat> educational cooperation is very much in the mm. focus of both the governments uh, and we consider that very important for uh, enhancing our cooperation. And as you mentioned that there are about 200 students, uh, Pakistani students are studying here now in Indonesia. So and in, in, in Saudi Arabia there are two million, around two million people, I mean Pakistani people there. So how about in Indonesia? So f from those 200, um, how many percent of these of, of, of the Pakistani people living in Indonesia? Uh, Indonesia has, I think, maybe two, 2,000 or so Pakistani diaspora. Mm -hmm. So not many Pakistanis uh, visit uh, Indonesia. One of the reasons, of course, is uh, the distance. I mean, Saudi Arabia is quite near. Secondly, I told about, uh, I talked about religious uh, center cornerstone mm -hmm. uh, being the birthplace of Islam, and so they they go there, uh, the Pakistanis. And the biggest reason, I think, is lack of direct uh, air connectivity between the two countries. I mean, we have many direct flights uh, to some Middle East and uh, many other destinations. But unfortunately, towards this part of the world, we don't have any direct flights. You have to either come from uh, Bangkok or through Malaysia or through other channels. So which is a kind of inhibiting factor uh, for people to come here. But uh, now we are under discussion uh, with the government uh, as well as the, some private sector organizations also. Uh, some airlines have expressed their interest to start direct flights towards Pakistan and uh, they have at different stages of approvals. So we hope that once uh, this uh, gap is filled, uh, the people will be more interested in coming directly to Indonesia. Also. So you, you will see more people coming to Indonesia once direct flight starts. Okay, hope this direct flight will uh, realize yes. soon. Yeah. Um, yes, Mr. Faisal, um, as we know that last month the uh, <coughs> French Secretary of the Pakistan, Asad Majid, uh, so say Asad Majid Khan expressed his interest in establishing maritime cooperation with Indonesia, particularly in the blue economy and fisheries sectors. So how does the government of Pakistan actually see the potential uh, that exists in Indonesia and how can this potential become an opportunity for cooperation between uh, the two countries? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Our uh, Vice Minister, uh, Dr. Asad Majid Khan, mm -hmm. he, he visited uh, Indonesia and he mentioned, rightly mentioned, about the potential of blue economy. Uh, this concept of blue economy, it seems relatively new, maybe a decade or so old, which has been incorporated in uh, our policy guidelines and policy papers by various governments. Uh, even the UN has uh, recognized in one of its SDG goals, I mean, mm -hmm. preservation of life underwater. So they have also recognized as one of the SDG goal to preserve life under oceans or in the waters. So uh, it has different definitions. To me, it's quite simple. I mean, using the oceanic resources in a responsible way, in a sustainable way, which is environmental friendly and not uh, put the life of uh, marine uh, creatures in danger. So in that context, and also we can uh, expand that for cleaner energy and other climate friendly policies also. So in that context there, uh, Indonesia is the biggest archipelago country in the world. And uh, of course, uh, it sits across two oceans, one of the biggest oceans. Yes. So Indonesia, for the Indonesia blue economy is the centerpiece of its economic development. Similarly, Pakistan to me also has a big coastline, more than 1,000 kilometers. And uh, we have Arabian Sea uh, near us, which ultimately goes into Indian Ocean. So for both the countries, this uh, cooperation in blue economy can be a big uh, source of cooperation in different sectors. Uh, in fisheries, uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned, then in uh, eco, uh, coastal tourism, yes. that can be an avenue of cooperation also. Then clean energy, as I mentioned. Then we both are developing countries. We are not like developed countries. So we can learn from each other's back best practices and research and technological know-how of how Indonesia is doing and how Pakistan is doing and then we can cooperate in this regard. So the potential is huge in this sector uh, which needs to be I think given due consideration. Okay, how much do the Pakistani, I mean the Pakistan's people um, consume about the fisheries products? 
because uh, I have never been there to mm-hmm. Pakistan, but as long as I know that uh, the people of Pakistan and some uh, countries in the uh, South Asia consume more about meat than uh, fish. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, we do like to eat meat a lot, <laughs> chicken meat or this kind of meat more. Uh, fish is kind of seasonal for us. I mean, we consume fish more in uh, winter seasons. And in summers, mostly we consume uh, this other meat, meat of buffaloes or goats or uh, chicken, as you said. So these are preferred in our part of the world instead of uh, uh, fish. Yeah. Yes. Yes, um, Mr. Faisal, as I know that besides the, okay, the potential for the Blue Ocean uh, Cooperation, I uh, remember that in the May last year, Indonesia and the Pakistani Defense Office held a, a virtual, actually, a virtually third round of joint defense cooperation committee in Bandung. So is there any discussion, as long as you know, is there any discussion on this after after I mean that time, uh, May 2022, and how is it going on at present? Yeah, our defense cooperation is also very good. It's also one of the priority areas for both the countries, and it's multidimensional. So what regularly happens these uh, days is the training of officers. So many of our officers serving in different military personnel, they, they are training in Indonesia and vice versa, Indonesian army personnel or other personnel. Uh, relating to defense, they receive training in Pakistan. So this is an ongoing cooperation, uh, which is happening in a very robust fashion. Mm-hmm. Then uh, port calls are very regular. Our ships, they regularly visit Indonesia. Even uh, last month, uh, there were two ships that came here, one to Jakarta and one to Surabaya. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was another one. Then the high level visits are regularly exchanged. Unfortunately, due to COVID, uh, there were some uh, visits that were postponed, but uh, after COVID, the momentum has started to gain again. Mm-hmm. So we hope that uh, soon uh, some VIP visits from the defense sectors will also happen. Besides this JDCC, which you mentioned, uh, we have other mechanisms also. We have security dialogue. The inaugural meeting of that will be soon happening, hopefully. And uh, Dr. Mahfoud, MD, from your side, he will be, uh, he is the chair chairperson, and from our side is the defense minister. So it was postponed a couple of times, but we hope that it will soon take place, yeah. Mm-hmm. And another sector that uh, still, I mean, going on at, at present is around the cooking oil sector. We know that um, Indonesia is one of uh, the biggest producer uh, cooking oil country in the world. And uh, Pakistan also consumes a good amount of uh, cooking oil. So Pakistan Edible Conference in, in Karachi take it in January this, this year about the two countries, I mean, Indonesia and Pakistan. But uh, do you have a uh, sort of information about the continuation of this cooperation, uh, in the, especially in the cooking oil sector? Yeah, uh, cooking oil, edible oil or palm oil, yeah, you name it, whatever you like. So that is very important for Pakistan. As you rightly mentioned, Indonesia is the biggest uh, exporter of palm oil and Pakistan also imports around 4, 4.5 billion mm-hmm. of palm oil products. So uh, it is a very important source of, uh, you know, uh, edible oil for Pakistan. Uh, last year, uh, when there was a ban by Indonesia on the export of uh, palm oil. So much effort was done on the part of our leadership. And uh, after uh, discussion with the President Joko Widodo also, then relevant ministers here in Indonesia, so the ban was lifted and uh, uh, the resumption of uh, uh, the palm oil uh, export was done. So in that context, uh, th- there has been a need, uh, our policymakers feel that the regularity of dialogue or discussion uh, for palm oil producers or exporters and importers should take place at uh, different venues and levels. So in that context, we can see this conference also took place uh, in order to see the food security in Pakistan and uh, the availability of palm oil in the coming days also. So I'm sure that uh, many fruitful decisions have been taken place with mm-hmm. regard to the uh, continuous supply of palm oil from Indonesia to Pakistan. Okay, good. And um, 
this is a little bit uh, out of the Pakistan and Indonesia uh, cooperation or relationship. But as we know that uh, this year Indonesia is the uh, ASEAN uh, chairmanship. So how is I mean the, the two countries, Indonesia and Pakistan, uh, made use uh, this I mean leadership or chairmanships uh, for better cooperation of the two countries. Yeah. ASEAN is of course very important in this region and ASEAN is the center of regional architecture here as mentioned by uh, your leadership and uh, which has been uh, seconded by various international leaders con including Pakistani leadership. They consider ASEAN as the most important organization in this region. So Pakistan became a member of uh, a full dialogue partner, a uh, sectoral dialogue mm -hmm. partner of ASEAN in 1993. And we have applied for full dialogue partnership. We became member of ASEAN Regional Forum also in 2004. So we have been endeavoring to enhance our cooperation with ASEAN because it has been so important in this region. Uh, Indonesia's chairmanship is also very important with regard to Pakistan also because Indonesia has been supporting Pakistan. It has supported Pakistan for full sectoral dialogue partnership and uh, mm -hmm. its membership of uh, uh, the ASEAN Regional Forum. So we are looking forward towards Indonesia's support with regard to Pakistan's uh, bid for the full dialogue partnership. And Indonesia has proven its leadership credentials in, uh, for example, last year in G20, how successfully the summit was conducted despite the difficulties faced uh, in the context of geopolitical developments last year after in the aftermath of Ukraine-Russia crisis. So Indonesia's leadership skill has been uh, very important in ASEAN to sail this uh, organization through more successful uh, waters, especially uh, the crisis in the form of Myanmar it faces right now. So we, we believe that uh, that crisis will be resolved soon. So in that context, uh, Pakistan gives high importance to ASEAN and Indonesia's leadership of ASEAN. I would like once again to say congratulations for the government and people of Pakistan for their uh, 76th anniversary of independence. And um, since we have a lot of listeners in Pakistan, what is, they are uh, in one uh, group, what we call, they call it a Pakistani Listeners Club. Yeah, okay, right. so would you say something to our listeners in Pakistan uh, through this program, Mr. Oh, thank you very much for providing this opportunity. And uh, to all my Pakistani uh, compatriots, I would just say many, many happy Independence Day. And I wish you all the best and a life full of happiness, uh, prosperity and good health. Thank you. Well, listeners and viewers of Voice of Indonesia, that was my very interesting um, conversation with uh, His Excellency Muhammad Faisal Fayaz, the deputy head of mission of Pakistani embassy in Jakarta regarding the Pakistani 76th anniversary of independence. I'm Dalat Pane, and see you next time. Voice of Indonesia.